no diversity. The government conformed everybody to be a part of one group, the master race. If you weren't a part of the master race, you were considered a subordinate species. In response to the unimaginable events that happened during World War II, people decided that they wanted to express themselves and find their identities that were once suppressed. This is known as the postmodern movement and can be viewed all around us in art, design, architecture, and social movements. The rise of exclusive nationalism in Germany and Austria was influenced by Karl Lueger, a politician who captivated the audience with great speaking abilities and terrible ideas of anti-Semitism. He wanted to preserve Catholicism by eliminating the threat of Jews. Lueger was perceived as relatable and charismatic and extremely persuasive. During Adolf Hitler's election, he was inspired by Lueger's strategies and put them to use during his own campaigns. Lueger and Hitler's ideas involved stripping society of all diversity and creating a master race of Germans. This involved the removal of all citizens who do not fit the strict criteria of the new master race. This was the start of the destruction of diversity in Europe. In 1933, Hitler came to power as president representing the Nazi party. Nazis were experts at branding themselves with their design choices, especially in poster design. Hitler joined the Nazi party and became the Erzatz art director by becoming head of the publicity department. He had this instinct for uniformity. He believed the way to control people was to control the news and media they were exposed to. The only type of lettering allowed was fraktur until the end of the war where Roman serif typefaces were also allowed. This symbolized Hitler's selfish parallel between the Roman success and his own. To reach his goal of complete uniformity, Hitler controlled everything for propaganda and posters. Propaganda influenced people to want to join the Nazi party. The powerful messages brainwashed the citizens into believing that giving up their own identities to conform was a better idea than embracing their individuality. The architecture Hitler was responsible for during his reign was very much inspired from the Roman and Greek cultures. He found the look of their designs to be intimidating and create a powerful presence. The Romans built a lot of buildings on hills in order to be seen by more people. Hitler used this strategy by building concentration camps such as Mauthausen on a hill so that many communities would see his creations and fear his power. The concentration camps were designed for torture and efficiency. There was no room for self-expression. No, he did not have any creative say at all because it's what Hitler wanted. So Hitler was like very closed-minded and was like, I want such, 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 but he wanted like this, st not steel, not glass, not any of that stuff. He wanted concrete or stone. When the Holocaust ended and people reclaimed their freedom, there was a huge change in society that can be referred to as the beginning of postmodernism. My identity is American citizen. American? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that question means. Exactly. It's identity, I think, is not something that you can be put into a box. That nothing is, you can't be defined as just one thing. Do you get pissed if someone tells you what you are? Absolutely. You can't tell me what to do. <laughs> um, Olympia Park represents it. The Pompidou represents it. Um, even the Louvre. I'll it's all organic. Yeah, right? And nature flowable. I feel like it's more reflective of the people who are creating it. Like the architects can do like more fun stuff and it reflects them more as a person. They wanted to involve everybody into this new awesome building that they were building for the Olympics. We want to show everybody what we're doing, like the good things that we're doing. And that's why they use the glass because everything in Germany was very closed off before and secretive as it's kind of showing Symbolic. that they're symbolically showing that they're ready to restart and move on. Graphic design was different in the postmodern era because they went from using a lot of rules and then by the time it turned over into postmodernity people were like you can do pretty much whatever you want. There was a period where like DIY, like do it yourself, was really popular, and that was like in the mid to late seventies. And then there was like handwritten stuff all over the place. It broke a lot of the boundaries that were set before. The conformity forced during World War II led to no progression in terms of human rights. It wasn't until the postmodern era that Europe was reintroduced to progressive voices such as Simone de Beauvoir. In de Beauvoir's book *Second Sex*, she spoke out about women's rights in a new way. 
She addressed the idea as women being treated as the other in terms of women and men. She preached that women were treated as subordinate and accepted that position. In order to make change, she wanted women to see their position and fight for their rights. The right to religion was also a new aspect of life after World War II. Postmodernism features many different religions. Religion is very important in terms of identity. Now many cities in Europe can be viewed as religious melting pots. We saw this in the French city Marseille, where a large Muslim population takes up about a quarter of the city's population. Most of the Muslim population immigrated to Marseille from Africa. The idea that an African person who identifies as Muslim can also identify as a French citizen was a new idea that is now extremely common in today's society. Well, recently there was the Charlie Hebdo controversy where they printed um, an, a considerably somewhat offensive graphic and then there was terrorism, there was um, the shooting, and then the entire world, like Eva see on Snapchat. Like, the entire, it was the entire world essentially saying they have a voice, that they're important, and it, you may not like it, and I may not like it, but they have a right to be able to print that. As a female business major, I have the right to be paid the same as men. As an interior design major, I have the freedom of creativity and to build whatever I want. As a professional communications major, I have the freedom to write and publish whatever I want. As a graphic design major, I have the right to design, print, and upload anything I want.